Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Jumpsus, and we're back after a short hiatus. Ever since I'm on Landy came out and you know, altered the meta, I wasn't feeling it, but now we're back. And I've decided to try and hit Legends this season, so this is a part of that journey, so <laughs> strap in for that, I guess. But for the first match, we're going to be doing a lot of the same. Um, I would describe my style as like standard slash aggro because my account gear is not very tailored for standard for reasons I cannot get into. Well, I can't get into it basically, but when I first started Epic 7, I used to watch a lot of Light because, like, you know, Light is like really funny <laughs> unintentionally and he makes Cleave look really fun. So what happened during the first few years of me playing is that I would only roll speed gear with like speed on it. Like I remember, like I distinctly remember <laughs> throwing out gear that was like perfect for like designer a little bit or tanks because I was like oh I'm not gonna play standard standards gross cleave is fun and now I'm here like two years later thinking like what am I doing with my life why did I throw gear out randomly and now whenever I like show my account to people they're like where's your tank gear and I'm like about that but we make it work. We make it work. This is not the worst season for standard. And a lot of Epic 7 is just about leveraging what you have against other people. And in the first game, my opponent's like picking like standard-ish. Um, but I'm trying to bait that I'm brain damaged by... So the correct ban here for most people will be Politis. Like 9 out of 10 times. But since I have Song of Stars on Lua, I'm pretty sure I can cheese him. Because I think what my opponent was expecting was that maybe I banned this Politis and then my Lua was just faster than his old team. But I was pretty confident that my Lua was outspeeding the Steelers anyway. So we did kind of like a piggy play where I banned the Steelers and I can just, you know, bait that I have brain damage, except. I don't actually need to press any of my non-attack skills here. I just apply target to Politis. We luckily get the target onto Arrowell. I don't think it's gonna kill because Arrowells are a little fat. Like, I would've killed if I had death take or whatever. But anyway, we rip this S3. The steady explodes. <laughs> the Politis explodes. This fire Rickies at like a quarter HP. Yeah, Emma like is just really fair and balanced. Um, I'm giving her better gear soon, but this is what I mean. Um, my account is not the perfect standard account, like by any shot. But I try to leverage it so that I can play aggressively no matter what. And like whether this is like picking 20 books or picking Bryce area with a book or just last picking I like or something like I can always leverage it to an aggro and that's what I want because like again my account is not made for standard so I want to so I never want to be in a situation where I am fighting someone like Kotick or you know, you like normal brother? people who gear tanks normally because they didn't throw away tank gear for two years. But yeah, I never want to be on a level playing field with them. I always want to make it somehow aggro. <laughs> but in the next match, my first... My first. <laughs> my opponent first picks Denny here. And that's not allowed here. Um, we play too aggressively to allow that to happen. But... My opponent is actually cleaving, so apparently it is allowed. Oops. But anti-cleaving is like pretty decent. It's not the worst. I picked DJB here just because it's a decent answer to Peyra. And I pick an Aiden answer that also doesn't care about Peyra. Obviously, the reason I picked Sakak here is because like the other 
fast blue opener he can possibly pick is Rand, but the Hawk should survive that too, thanks to like the elemental frenzy and stuff. But my opponent decides to pivot back into more of a standard style, which I wasn't expecting. But no matter, no matter. I'm pretty sure this is a easily winnable situation. I was thinking of either going for Bryce Syria here, or I could go for like a more of a piggy route and pick a speed landy to kind of bait and cycle my team faster. But I'm not quite sure to do here in this circumstance. I think in hindsight, what I really should have done is I should have picked Bryce Syria here, but we picked Landy. My opponent underestimates it for some reason and then decides to ban my Lua which I guess makes sense because if I ban Para and then just you know reset his team it'll be very annoying for him to come back but I think we're pretty good because even though I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna Zahawk S3 the first turn like, I think my team has a little bit too much tempo for him to deal with. Because a speed landy with speed buff makes her above 300 speed. So, like, she has insane cycling, especially if she has targets with buffs to continuously, you know, get pushed up by 30% or whatever. Like, she reaches insane speed. Like, as long as you have something to tank for her, which I do in this case. My opponent rips their Paras too. It hits my Landy, which I guess is like cool and everything. They go for the Soul Burn onto DJB. They luckily do not get it here, so we're able to just push up with DJB here and start our insane cycling. Um, unluckily though, my Landy does go ahead of my Zahawk, which I was hoping wouldn't happen. But you know, not the worst thing in the world. We Soul Burn because we really need the guiding light to proc so i wanted to give myself two chances because there's so many matches with speed landy where if you just don't guiding light you just die free but luckily that's not happening today and i really do not want to give this aiden lifesteal buff for free so we're just gonna run in this s3 into abigail here i'm hoping it does a lot of damage but mm, the damage is not as much as I hoped for, and we could run the Sylvan Sage S3 here, but it's probably not going to kill Abigail if I'm being honest, just because it's so tanky. And yeah, Abigail barely survives. Um, Steady and Para are deleted, but you know, they weren't going to be much of a factor anyway. DJB actually, to my surprise, gets blown up here. <laughs> like, I thought he would live a little bit better than that, but whatever. No matter, no matter. Abigail is able to go here. Um, she's basically either gonna go for Sylvan Sage Vivian or Zahawk. If I were him, I think I would have went on Sylvan Sage Vivian because Sylvan Sage Vivian is a lot more difficult to kill than Zahawk. But you know, say la vie. It is what it is. But I can also understand why opponent strips Zahawk too because I was gonna Soul Burn into this Aiden anyway. But now I just have to save the Soul Burn and kill Abigail because Abigail somehow survived this whole thing, but whatever. My opponent is able to finally go with Aiden. Um, it doesn't look to be life seal set, so we can easily overwhelm this Aiden even with her CR pushes I think, because even on a miss, our team does a little too much damage. We do eat an Aiden counter here, um, which I think was a mistake for my part, like I think I should have saved Landy S3 to potentially proc it but we soul burn for fun and the fun for fun points allowed us to hit aiden so that's pretty fun and good but yeah like i hope i'm demonstrating that i'm moving away from my like hard cleaver days and i'm just playing to my advantage but i do it in a way where it's aggressive because again like i am so bad at playing standard Unless it's anti-cleave, like I'm okay at anti-cleave, but my anti-cleave still does need a little bit of work. I struggle the most against <sighs> Zeo cleavers. Um, I'm not gonna slander Zeo cleavers or anything, but like, 
Come on now. <laughs> Come on. But my opponents, like, first picking Rand Politis in 2023. We obviously cannot let this happen for free. So I pick Aiden just because Aiden's like a decent answer into these. Um, it's obviously gonna invite in like Caesarea or whatever later. But that's fine. Like that's fine. Like I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not salty at all. But my opponent picks Aemon Vildred, which is kind of a good pick. Um, I'm leaning towards just banning Vildred, uh, banning Aemon at this point, unless Caesarea comes out, which I think is gonna be disgusting. I pick my Senya because I've been having a lot of luck with Senya as anti cleave lately, especially since a lot of these teams don't really have a good out for Senya other than you know like just critting our RNG. And while Rant does make it tough because he gives his whole team immunity, I think this should still be doable. But I'm not too sure. I picked Designer a little bit just because Ran is a really big threat. But yeah, Caesarea does come out, and I pretty much do have to ban this because I'm not too sure about this. Aim its speed, because I think like a really piggy way I could have done this is I could have just banned Ran. But I'm not too sure about aim its speed because I don't know this guy, unfortunately. So I kind of just have to let everything else through here, but it doesn't look the worst for me okay so my lua does outspeed okay first of all like why <laughs> what dps is on protection side here sir but other than that i think it's the politics i think because it's actually slower than my senya but since my oh oh my aiden got hit fun and then my senya proc so, so my Aiden just dies for fun. Hello? And now Vildred gets to push for fun. Okay, so what should have happened was that my Lua should have cut in between the middle. And then I think my Lua has enough effectiveness to debuff this Aiden. And then I could like reverse cleave him with DJB and Senya. But, you know... Sometimes your Aiden decides to get hit by a 50-50 by symbol of unity ran and then you just lose for fun. What can you do? <laughs> okay, unlucky, unlucky. But you know, it happens. When I was climbing this day, a lot of my losses were to cleave. I think that's my weakest matchup. I think my weakest matchup right now is Zeo Cleavers. And then People who prevailed C. Lilius and. Excuse me, C. Lilius and Lua. It kind of forced me to play more of a standardish style. But I think I'm getting better at that because in that situation, I just pick AOL. And AOL is very cringe, especially if you give her book or whatever. So 10 out of 10, would we'll recommend. Anyway, we go into our next match, but they banned Lua, which kind of sucks. But Lua does. Not Lua, C. Lilius is still usable. I definitely think she's a lot, lot worse in this meta. But you can always leverage it against these... What's this called? Ocean Breeze, Luka, and Lionheart players. My opponent last picks fucking... Ran here. I was thinking about picking BBK, but that's a little bit sussy, especially since my BBK isn't... You know, high ER. So I decided to just pick Rylet here, last pick, because Rylet is pretty decent into my opponent's team. My opponent bans it. I decide to ban my opponent's Rand instead. Since my Celius, you know, is no longer out of speed, where I can, like, rationally outspeed Rand. And we're just gonna rip. We switched up imprints. We check the Selene EE and then we make sure that it's going into Briar because in all honesty, as long as Briar gets a defense break onto Lionheart Sylvia, this game like pretty much over. <laughs> if it makes sense. We press C S3 with Celius, you know, Briar Witch goes into Selene goes into our Briar Witch. We push back 
this Celine just so we can go in front of it. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it could have went. But if this Celine was Omega damage, it might have one shot my Desert Jewel Star. So I wanted to avoid that. My opponent does her thing with Ocean Breeze Luluka, which is like cool and great. Except my DGB is just able to go and cleanse right after. So I really don't care about <laughs> what Ocean Breeze just did. We can apply a buffable and strip the death buff. So this is what I mean. Like Bryceria, I found is a pretty good answer. As long as you draft in a way where you don't get soloed by Edward, because the whole point of picking up Bryceria like early-ish into a draft is that you're flexible enough to pivot out of these debuffs. So you can always pick something like uh like Lifesteal Aiden plus Arya, which would be which can beat Edward on a 1v1. We luckily do get a death break onto Lionheart Surya, so we just send that shit back to the Shadow Realm. And then they can stun here with Airwell, but since there's unbuffable, it really doesn't matter. Both my DPS are hiding in stealth, so I don't really care. I go for a piggy stun here. We unfortunately do not get it, but we do crit, which is pretty nice. But again, like, the Selene can S3, but she's not gonna get evasion, so she's just gonna die to one tap to my Bryce area. Don't be and so my opponent recognizes this, this and decides to tap out. But yes, like this is like unironically <laughs> the most standard I've ever played <laughs> in RTA. And I've been finding the most success, I think. Like if I think I had a big mental block where I was like not sure if my account could hit legend, but my guild leader and like a good friend even though like he doesn't respond to my dms xlr like at xlr not today uh he said that you should try to go for like a legend What's climb once time? you find emperor easy and now i'm finding emperor like very easy i can just coast to like rank 300 and afk but you know i'm greedy so <laughs> i'm gonna go for the legend frame and you know if s fins can hit legend so can i no, i'm just kidding just S Fins has really good gear. Like I'm I'm capping. My opponent here is cleaving. He's from the guild six deck. And so the story about this guild is really funny. So the leader of this guild, like six duck six duck, he's like a standard tank down player. Like he picks shit like FCC Lionheart Ruel every game. But if you look at everyone else in, a, in his guild, they're all cleavers. They all first pick Ran. They are all first pick Zeo. So like, I don't know where he picked up these cleavers, but like, whatever. My opponent's team here though, looking pretty weak. I picked like my standard first picks, but we're gonna pick my worst in world Karina here. She has no molas. She has fucking <laughs> no anything, but it's fine. We ban Cesaria, but this should be a game that's soloable by my Senya or my Karina, depending. My opponent bans DJB, which kind of sucks, but I don't think it matters too much because my opponent's team is so squishy that they should just die to one S2 plus S3. Or like just one S3 combo from both my Senya and my... What's the thing called? My Senya and Karina, sorry. I never picked these units, so I'm having a break for it. Anyway, they soul burn with Ran here, which is pretty understandable to get the death breaks, but they get one on Senya. Not Senya, they get one on Politis, but whatever. They hit Yolha for a billion damage, which is also whatever. And my Lua takes a beating, but thankfully my Lua is really tanky and she's really fast, so she's able to just cut this team for free. And since Rand Soulburn is S3, he's actually not able to go for the Paul to Soulburn here, and he just has the S1 and hold all the skills. And so, since my opponent had their fun, now it's my turn, you know? We're gonna go for the worst in world Karina S3 here, um, zero molas in anything. Plus 15 rocket punch. We do land the death break, but you know, Pair is tanky and decides to live. But now we're just gonna ram our Senya S3 into this. And since we stripped off all the immunities, this is about to do 
pretty decent damage, I think. And maybe land blind to provoke, but I just reverse cleave him. <laughs> With Senya and Karina S3. But yeah, you would never have seen this, like even two months ago on my channel, but your boy is evolving. We're becoming slowly more standard-ish. Standard adjacent is how I describe it, maybe. But anyway, we're just gonna continue on to our next match. Legend is currently like 3,400? 3,450 or something. So I'm like 100-ish points off. And my opponent here decides to be very rude and first pick this Lua away from me. But I cannot play standard into Lua. Um, I can if I cheese with like speed. If I cheese it with like speed, um, speed landy, I can do it. But speed landy is like easily counterable <laughs> if you know like. You know, like, you know, like, if someone picks, like, a landy second pick against you, like, it's very obvious that it's a speed landy, especially if it's, like, um, a draft where it doesn't make sense for a lane to show up that early unless she was speed, like, into, like, first pick Lua, for example. But I decided to pick Briar plus Steny just because it's a really flexible core. And... I'm kind of forcing my opponent to not play aggressively, like, you know, like, I'm leveraging my picks here. <laughs> and my opponent picks Sage Ball, which is, like, pretty good anti-cleave, so I respect it, I respect it. But I think I'm gonna look for an angle where I can last pick Arya. Um, last pick Arya is a little bit sussy into Scarewell and Lua. But since I have debuffers, I think I can get away with it. And my opponent last picks Arby, which I think is very questionable, considering I have Briseria on the board, plus multiple ways to kill Arby. But I say decide to just go for a safer play and ban out Lua, so I can just play it out. Because even if my opponent bans Arya, like, my opponent's team doesn't have the most damage like even if i skip the first turn like zero and celia should be able to tank a few skills for me and we'll see we'll see and a fun interaction you can get is that sage ball may not actually push up enough since zero is so high up on the cr bar to actually cut celia so that's also something you should watch out for my opponent does end up banning Arya because my opponent does recognize, like, you know, like, Arya kind of, like, dumpsters his whole team. And I did have souls to get out of Lua if I really wanted to. Anyway, we're gonna go for the pushback and silence onto this APOC here, just because, you know, it's max percent health damage, why not? Except Proof of Valor is fair and balanced and doesn't do enough to, like, do anything noticeable, which is fine. But Sage Ball does not cut enough because, you know, Zero's too high far up on the CR bar, so Sage Ball did not cut enough. We're gonna redirect Provoke this RB here just so he can't skill 3. And then... My opponent's able to go for the Sage Ball here, but again, like, my Briseria wasn't slept, but I don't think it would have mattered at all, if I'm being honest. Because I just would have waited a turn and Briseria would have went back into Guiding Light and I would have been fine, but I decided to just take out Arby. Like, I didn't expect it to be so paper, but we're fine. Like, again, like, he can sleep or stun something if he wants, but it really doesn't matter. <laughs> he can't bring back Arby because Briseria is on the board, but I still have Steady to be very threatening to my opponent's team. Apparently, this Sage Ball is on. Abyssal Crown 2, which is where my Zeo got their stun from, but whatever. We're not sweating at all. My opponent has no Escort, my opponent has no, like, anything. His RB still death broken. I can just S1 with a Briar and S3 with APOC into it, and then my opponent literally cannot respond. My DPS is in time, I don't think. This arrow wall can like S3, but again, unbuffable is such a strong debuff if you don't have cleansers for it. 
and my opponent recognizes that my steady is about to send his APOC to another dimension, and then he forfeits. Yeah, I hope I'm like displaying how I can leverage a lot of drafts aggressively, and I play to my outs for the most part. But yeah, I definitely would recommend this for your account. Like, you need to see how your account fits into the meta. Like, there's a lot of ways you can play it. Like, the most common way that I know is that you eat up these victim drafters by playing aggressively, but there's like always flip sides. There's a people who find a lot of success by, you know, eating up the aggro monkeys, or they just brain dead cleave everything if they gear gap, or they, you know, play really good standard against other standard players. So you just need to find a, a play style that really works for you. Like, I was having this conversation with another friend of mine, and they were like, you can emulate somebody's style all you want, but until you figure out how things work for you, you're not going to, like, progress that much because, you know, people have their inherent biases. Like, even if I were to pilot an account, or, like, you, someone else were to pilot an account with, like, the exact same unit, the exact same gear, you will see, like, some differences in draft style just because... People just have a natural bias, you know, like I have a bias to play more speed focused, some people have a bias to play more standard focused. And that really shows up during like picks and stuff. Anyway, my opponent picked LRK and Steny, the first two picks, so I was like, oh, this guy's a victim drafter. And decided to pick, you know, victim punishing units. But they decided to pivot into Peira Karina, which is pretty decent considering Sylvan Sage and Vivian was on the board, but I pick my green units here, you know. And my opponent. You know Ren is balanced on like half the units <laughs> that are not in Guiding Light have to be tuned to be able to live with Ren S3, and like, so I pick my units that are tuned to live with Ren S3. My opponent picks Sid here, but I decide to just ban it out and to play it safe. But... Ooh. <laughs> my Lua does get the outspeed here. Which is really funny, but whatever, whatever, it's fine. We go for the sleep on Para, but apparently this is a resistance para, which is like, oh brother, like whatever. It's fine. I sobered here with Lua just because my team doesn't really have too many things to sober anyway. And if you didn't notice this Karina is on Noble Oath, so I need to be very careful about that. My opponent does soul burn into my Aemid, which kind of sucks, but you know, it's to be expected. My Aemid is on ER, like 200, but it's not uncommon for Paris to be like even higher ER than that. I don't press my Sylvan Sage Rivian S3 just because, you know, I don't want to give my LRK by, I don't want to give their LRK by cooldown and a barrier. But even though this game isn't going as perfectly, it's going like pretty decent, like to be honest. I'm fishing for a death break here onto LRK, but we don't get it. But this Ludwig is about to do a lot of damage. Uh, my Ludwig is built on pretty decent damage, and I don't see the Steny surviving. I was considering just s one here, just so I can get the Ahmed push and stuff. But then I decided to just go for the death pen S3 and like see how much damage it does. Except it does a lot more damage than I thought, and now it's only this Karina on this board. And when it's just this Karina, my Ludwig will solo this eventually, so my opponent decides to tap out. But that's it. Um, it's been a while since my last video. Um, thank you for your patience. I'll try to maintain weekly uploads while I lose my mind trying to end Legend. But yeah. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you next time.